you can begin. Hello, we're team one. I'm Levante. I'm Janola. I'm Tom. I'm Kendra. And we're talking about the effect social media has on interpersonal skills. We chose this topic because even though social media makes things convenient, it sort of makes us lazy. And text messages kind of like slim the impacts and emotions that we actually put out to other people. Is that embedded? How does the Is that embedded? Um, on ours, yeah, it should be just you touch it and push it down. Yeah, I probably could just uh, bring out the PowerPoint slides. Sure. Okay, this is what you have to do. It's a duplicate when you go to. She goes further into like basically explaining how calling is much better than texting because with the calling you can actually express yourself a little bit more compared to what texting does. And texting is like a little bit limited to what you can actually like express to the other person, especially if they're angry, trying to like uh, portray that you're actually serious about the situation, etc. Up there at the top, see the see the tab at the top. Yeah. Oh, right there. No, your the tab is right there. It's how social media. Okay. There you go. Now you just need to get out of that. So just okay. exit her. To me, it's a, it's a pretty good convenient networking tool for me to connect with people all around the world. But at the same time, it's more of a procrastination tool for us not to do our homework. I'm sure like everyone uses the following. Who uses Twitter? YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we got some 
liars in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we're going to like continue to talk about more of the anal analytical parts about like social media. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. I don't know how to work this. So statistically, these are the most, the two most popular social networking sites. I guess uh, the, fir the first one is Facebook. Second one is Instagram. Third one is, well, second one is YouTube. Third one is Instagram, etc. And uh, there's a quote by Gatefell. He said, uh, almost a quarter of the world's population is now on Facebook. In the USA, nearly 80% of internet users are on this platform. Which I remember when I was a kid that like Facebook used to be like the cool thing. Until like now, I guess like a lot of adults invaded it. So like, it's <laughs> not the spot to be anymore, but it's <laughs> positive effects social media has on our lives. Um, it's easier to connect to more people around the world. I remember when I was a kid, um, I would have like relatives in China or whatever, and my mom would have to like buy a card to like talk to them, and it would, they would like charge me by the hour or whatever. But now that like, there's so many apps that you can just call or text them and you don't even have to pay, and you, or you can just FaceTime them, which makes it like way easier instead of just calling them. And uh, another positive effect is that um, <coughs> it's easy to be informed about current affairs in the city and state. And I'm pretty sure like every smartphone has this. If you set like your location on, like it would, it would tell you like if there's like a weather emergency or like a flood warning like around you. <coughs> and it helps teens boost their self-esteem that allows them to work on their skills. I personally felt this, there's like this thing on Facebook Call it tasty, and it like tells you like, these, it tells you like how to cook, or whatever. And I've like tried that, and it never ends up working well. <clears throat> and there's a lot of different sites to surf through that people get entertainment from. What that means is um, you're just so there's so many websites out there that uh, you can just get entertainment from, like YouTube or Twitter, especially like if you like on Twitter. There's like a lot of beef, I guess we call it, and it's really entertaining. And uh, since there's so many websites, you can like learn more information. <coughs> like um, for accounting, if I don't know how to do a problem, I just go online and I kind of just like Google the problem to like learn how to do it because it's not that good for the answers. And uh, like, just basically like a picture representing our society. How like when people like post a picture. They just want like more likes. I, I don't know why, but like, yeah, clout. <laughs> I mean, I'm being hypocrite to say that this doesn't pertain to me, because like if I if I post a picture, I guess I just want more likes, because it like kind of boosts my self esteem, kind of makes me like accepted in society or whatever. That's just my input on it. Funny story. There's, there was this girl last year. She she told me. All right, I didn't make it up to 205 likes, so I must be ugly today, fortunately. Which I didn't get because 205 likes is actually a lot, and I barely get 205 likes on my own post. Which is like crazy. <laughs> Fake profiles. We all know people can make fake profiles about. I mean, that are not, are not a real person. It could be about a, a celebrity, somebody that they know, or somebody they don't know. Um, if you ever seen the TV show Catfish, that, that happens all the time. It's it's scary and sad. <laughs> um, it encourages poor grammar and spelling, just like the video said. I uh, IDK and LOL. Um, it's just. It's, it's, it's people, people are getting comfortable with it and they're starting to use it in their writing. And that's clearly not good because it's an acronym. And acronyms like that should definitely not be in my writing. 
and uh, and social media uh, makes people compare each other's lives. So like, if you see somebody, some people see people on vacation posting pictures and they become jealous because they're not on vacation. But at the end of the day, people can compare their lives uh, because everybody's life is different at the end of the day. And I have a small little smart part soon. It says, the white rabbit says, I worry that Facebook is killing meaningful communication and when the dog is right, right? But it's ironic because the rabbit is on his phone like while talking to the dog when he's talking about how Facebook or other social media apps um, destroy <coughs> communication. So it's just, it's just bad overall. He's talking about it or he's doing it at the same time. Um, I So the benefits of having interpersonal skills is um, supportive relationships and friendships, better work environment, solve, some trouble, solve troubleshoot problems, productivity, leadership, and professional success. Uh, at the end of the day, these all lead up to all lead up to being well, all lead up to being about being able to communicate comfortably. Because if you can't communicate comfortably, you won't be able to do any of these any of these things. So now I'll be passing it off to Kendra. Where she'll be talking. As you can see in digital presentation, that we are so dependent on our phones, iPad technology, using our homework, using our everyday lives. Um, so the interaction with people will be limited and our rights will be gradually decreasing. I was a manager for four years and just like PTC at first standard, how um, people present put their paperwork and use all that bad English. It's just like that in resumes. I'm looking at it, I'm just looking at it like, wow, they're, they're saying I don't know, LOL, I'm putting that stuff in like resumes and application, so it's the same exact thing. Being able to read social cues and body language is a major component of social communication. As you see in the bottom of the photo, everyone is walking and they're looking on their phones. When you're not, when you're looking on your phone and not talking, you're actually missing opportunities and you could be networking, because like that guy over here could be like, he can be the job you want, he can be in that office one day, but you're missing that opportunity of possibly working for them one day. How to cut down on social media. Um, you should limit the amount of time you're spending on social media because it's just like you're like, like letting your life pass by, you're wasting time. Find another hobby, read a book, go to the gym. You should shut down the Wi-Fi for a little bit and you should learn how to conversate with others because like I just said, you could be missing opportunities that you didn't think you would be able to get. How to work on our interpersonal skills. We can don't show negative body language like that video showed in that video we watched about two weeks ago crossing the arms, looking like this, having a mean face. You shouldn't interrupt when someone's talking, you should just be able to listen to them. You should always think before you speak because that can ruin your opportunity one day. You should listen to learn, not to respond. Most of the time we're always like trying to think of what we're gonna say, but we're not listening to what the other person is really saying because we're so ready to respond. You should actively listen. You should be, you should be neutral. You shouldn't be in an attacking mode. You should be always having a bad attitude with it. You shouldn't, don't say, Um, you should be confident. You should always, when you're, when you wake up in the morning, you should always be confident. Think about today's gonna be a good day. Work on your skills. Think of who you can talk to to better your life. And you should be able to receive feedback. One thing that a lot of people in this society, many years this year, in this matter, you should be able to receive feedback because constructive criticism is really important. You can learn how to better yourself. Like I said, be confident. And that's pretty much it. These are the references that we used, all eight of them. And any questions, comments? Thank you. Thoughts, comments, social media. So you did the positives and the negatives. You didn't pick a yeah. position one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you were about two minutes over the 12 minutes. You were about 14 minutes. Um, uh, so <laughs> yeah. So I think I think one of the things, and I can I can say this now because you've all presented. So one of the things you need to be careful about. Some of you did it. Some of you did it very well. Is you. You did a good job in your outlines. You gave me some good, some good facts, as I asked you for, some citations and things. You need to make sure that they're translating into your presentation, right? I didn't see any citations on your slides. And so I don't know if these are your, if these are your opinions 
or if there's, you got them from somewhere, right? That's a really important thing when you're presenting presentations like this to found them in facts, right? So you're saying I think they, I think you did use citations for those, but I don't know that because you okay, didn't. So you, on that, um, the chart that Tom explained, like when you did that case in 2017, there should be more of that in it. Is that what you're saying? Well, the chart, go back to the chart. Yeah, so did you get that from Dream Grow? Like this whole quote was from Cause so, th so there's, there's an example of a citation. So, so you, you did that. That, that was okay. Basically. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. But then there were a lot of other slides where you were giving, giving us stuff, mm -hmm. and I don't know where that came from. You know, is that just your opinion, or is that, is that something you found somewhere in the, in, the, in the writing? Yeah, actually, we basically did this presentation based on our outline and just <clears throat> critiqued it more. I know you did, and I, and I have your outline, and I can yeah. see that it's, it's thorough and you cite, cited things. But I, it didn't translate. In, it didn't translate into your presentation. You know they have to be connected, okay. right? I know. I know you were using sources because you gave them to me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see them in the, in the presentation on the slides and things. More. So that's just a general comment. You just need to be careful that you're that when you're presenting to somebody because they, they may not ha they they may not have your outline. You know when you go up to do a presentation, you're not going to necessarily give them an outline also, right? You're gonna you're gonna do a presentation, and so it has to have everything in it that you use to support it. The outline is for the group's purpose <laughs> to put it all together, right? The presentation itself is what people are going to see. So that's why you want to make sure that it's all in there. I would say in our defense with uh, this topic is social media is a little bit more like personal, like for us to like really like connect with each other because it affects like everyone differently. Basically we had to kind of like put out like our own voices into it instead of just trying to give like, Right, and I don't, I don't, that's, that's not wrong, but the purpose of the presentation was to make an argument using facts to support it. So, so I think the other thing that, that, that you could have, that, that would have been stronger with your presentation is to pick one side or the other. Like, convince me that there's really some bad things about social media that are really inhibiting our ability to be social, like your, like your video said, right? Her, the topic of the video was how social media makes us unsocial. You know, that would, have been, that would have been strong in terms of a direction. Mm -hmm. So I think you were trying to cover a lot of things. It's probably one of the reasons you went over also, because you were trying to cover everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of skimming it back to something that was manageable for the time that you were allotted. Just something to be thinking about when you go to do presentations. You know, you only have so much time, you got to get it done, mm -hmm. right? My students that presented this week in Washington had, 15 min had 20 minutes, including questions, and someone walked in the room and cut them off if they weren't done. So I mean, it was including questions and everything. So it's it's you know it's just important to be cognizant of the of the time frames that you're within. Yeah, Brandon. Uh, to stand on a positive note, I love that you guys brought personality because I thought it was really fun and entertaining. And I there was a, obviously the audience was very in tune with the with the topic, right? I wrote that down in the paper, right? Very relevant topic for the audience <laughs> because everybody can relate to it. So, all right, nice job. Okay, so um, we are just about on time, which is perfect. Uh, we, we launch back into some chapters next week. I think we're doing chapter 11 next week, chapter 11. So the quiz should be posted. Um, has anybody found it yet? The yeah. quiz? No, it's, yeah. it's, it's there. there. It's yeah. there, okay, good. So the quiz is there, and... Um, what, we'll, what I'll do on Tuesday to start out is I'll, I'll do a little debrief. Since everybody's done their presentations, we'll do a little debrief on some things, some key things that I, that I saw that were good, right? Some things that you, that you did that were really good. And, and some things that you just need to be thinking about going forward when you're making presentations, okay? Uh, I have to still, because I don't think I've posted them yet, um, is make sure that your self-critiques, the videos are being... Um, Turn this off. Oh, I'm on screen.